Hello and welcome back everyone. This is your quest master Shreyansh on the quest introduction to Rust. In this specific sub quest, we'll be looking at composite built-in types. Now that we're in the code editor, let's talk about tuples. Tuples essentially return a set of values of different types. Let's look at this. We will define a variable called a, which will contain, let's say, um, a number, a string, and let's also include probably a bool. Excellent. And what I'll do here is that I'll print this out and we'll print out the first element of the tuple. The way you do that is by the dot index. So a dot zero in this case becomes the first element. Let's run this and there we go. The first value is five. Excellent. Moving straight on. Similarly, let's try accessing the first two values. So I'll just modify the text a little bit to say two values and I'll also include another format string here. And we'll do a dot one in this case, which is the second element. Let's run this again. And excellent, we see the first two values, which are five and hello world. There are a couple of ways of accessing these values in a tuple. The first one we saw is to just assign it to a variable. In this case, we'll do val1 and val2, which will represent the first two elements within that tuple. Let's print that out and let's see what we get. We'll say the first value is something and the second value is something, and we'll fill that in with the variables we defined previously. So in this case, val1 and val2. Let's move on to our terminal and let's see what we get. Excellent. The first value is one and the second value is two. It works like it's expected. Let's see the second option, which is also called destructuring. In this case, we try to create a tuple on the left and a tuple on the right. So in this case, I'm creating val1 and val2, a tuple on the left, and a is a tuple on the right. You'll see it gives an error where it says that the tuples need to contain three elements, but it only found two. It needs to match the number of elements you have in the tuple you're trying to destructure, in this case A. So let's just add a underscore here to ignore the other value. Let's copy and paste the other macro here, and this should work just as expected. Let's try it again, and there we are. As expected, it works. Let's talk about arrays next. Now arrays also return a set of values, albeit of the same type. The way you define an array is through the square bracket notation. So in this case, we will see a square bracket followed by a couple of i32 values. The way you access these values is through the square bracket again. So we'll try accessing the first value again here with a at zero, which means the first element. So let's run this and what we see is that the first value is one. Moving straight on, let's say you had to declare an array which contains the same element repeated a number of times. What we do for that is we define the array, but this time the first element becomes the value you want to repeat and the second element becomes the number of times you want to repeat it. We'll print this out of the special formatting directive, which includes the colon and the question mark, which is just debugging. And let's try running this. And what we see here is that the array itself has been printed, which contains again, the 10 zeros as we want it. To give the type to this array, we do something like this. Open the square brackets, we enter the type of the elements followed by the length. So in this case, i32 is the length of every element and 10 is the length of the array. You must also realize that the same concepts of mutability apply to arrays as well. In this case, I'll try to mutate the first element and I'll try printing that out. As you can see, it gives an error saying that it is not declared as mutable. The simple way to fix this would be to just declare the array as mutable by adding the mute keyword, saving this, and I'll also update the text saying the updated value. Let's try running this and it works now.